Hey everybody, in this video series, I'm gonna show you how to go from an image that you like. This is just a can of craft beer, a pretty good one at that. I like this little cat, Diablo Gato. And I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. There are just a few simple steps and you can adjust them as needed depending on what you're trying to print. And then you can have your own image that you wanna convert into a 3D model. So let's get started. Hey everybody, so the process for this is really just a few basic steps. Now, depending on how complicated you have for an image, there may be more involved touch-up work, but there are essentially a few main steps, and I'll, I'll just cover those briefly now, right up front. Of course, you need to start with your image. I took this with just my cell phone camera. I took the label off the can. I flattened it out. I snapped a pic. I sent it to myself and, and have it here. You can see that it's definitely not a perfect image. There's a lot of blemishes and things here, but uh, there's going to be a quick and easy way to clean this up, especially because we're going to be working with SVG files, which is really kind of an outline type of file. So uh, it's going to process is really going to aid us in some of this cleanup and I'll show you this real quick. I'm trying to use all freely available tools for everybody uh, and the idea of this is fast free um, way to go from concept potentially an image you that you took into a 3D model. So you can of course download some graphic files from the internet it's up to you where you obtain those things they do need to meet a couple of important pieces of criteria. So once you have your image, the idea is to clean up the image, convert the image to SVG file, and then bring that file into 3D program of choice. Make sure it looks the way you want it to, and then export it to an STL file. Take your STL file, bring it into your 3D printing program of choice, and then... so. It's only a few key steps, but here's our image. One of the first things I'm going to do to this is simply crank up the brightness and contrast. And by doing this, I'm darkening the image, and I'm also essentially creating a black and white image here. Just from messing with the brightness and contrast thing you can do is just convert it to black and white first. Even if you do that, it's really not black and white. It's more like grayscale. You need truly black and white. There are some programs that can work with a colored SVG file. Uh, if there are multiple colors in it, it can bring those in, but th this is going for kind of the most simple process here. This, I think, is going to work out great for us. So just by, and like I said, this is paint.net, which is available uh, on the internet for free. Grab that, crank up the contrast, crank up the brightness, and you have yourself a black and white image. That's going to make things a lot easier because uh, if you take these two colors, load up a brush, you can grab, I'm going to grab a pretty large sized brush here on a 500 will be fine. You want the hardness to be all the way up so that when you draw a line, it's crisp. You don't want any anti-aliasing or uh, pixelated kind of thing. You want as crisp of a line as possible. The goal is really just to, actually we don't even care about all that. Uh, the next thing to make your uh, up easier, so you've got your you've got your two colors, you've got your image already just made into a black and white file. The next thing you're going to want to do is just select what you want. And I'm going to cut this at the feet right here like this. And yes, I know I'm cutting some of those flower items off, but this is about how I'm going to want this file. Oh, I'll have to fix that top of the crown thing there. And if you just crop this, even less you have to clean up. So now you can take your, your brush, that's probably even too large now, and you can just go around and clean up some of these other items, whatever you don't want here. And this doesn't have to be perfect in, in any way, but there are a couple of important things you'll want to watch out for. And let me cover those real quick. So I think you get the idea. You'll just want essentially an outline of your model. 
If you want the thing to stand up like I do, stand straight up, instead of being flat, you're going to want to have a flat bottom, which is why I cut it straight across here. Um, what I'll do, I'll show you, I'm just going to repair that afterwards. So you, you have an opportunity here to manipulate the model to match kind of what you want, or I guess model to be. It's really just an image at this point or an outline. But a couple of things you'll want to be careful of, and one of them is right here. So I'm going to hold the control key and my mouse wheel, so scroll in, and you can see all this little sort of speckle uh, information here. You're going to want to go through and just clean up anything that's like that and have, have yourself a nice crisp outline of the file. And you'll just want to try to maintain the same outline width all the way around. It just, I think, just helps the look. Again, if there's a piece like this that you think you think could look a little different, you by all means, you can go in and fill that in, sort of clean that up a little bit. If you want to have that piece kind of filled in here, or you could just have it as a, as a crevice of some kind. Uh, but anyway, you'll want to go through, just look around your model, because this is your opportunity to clean this file up so that it does not all these little artifacts don't try to translate into vertices and lines and things once you bring this into a 3D program. Likewise, if there's any just stray pixels around, you can see I'm kind of cleaning up some of those. There's a couple here on like the feet and things. Those will just kind of mess up the 3D image. For example, I don't like this missing tooth here. I'm just going to draw myself a tooth while I'm at it. You know, you have a you have the opportunity to modify this in such a way that you want. Uh, likewise, down here, I wanted this to be a sort of straight cut flower on the bottom, so try to clean that up. Clean up some of this information down here by the around the flower and some of this 3D detail. You want to try to maintain this same outline width all the way around the image. So if it starts getting a little too wide, you can just kind of cut that out. And before you know what it'll be, you know, cleaned up the way you want, and you'll have just the outline. And then one more thing. So you'll want to clean up all these details, clean up any speckled things. And there's one more thing you need to be aware of, and it's here. Uh, is a great example of it. So oh, I want to just really quick, before I forget, I want to repair my leaves here. Okay, so this angle of this ear tip here is meant to represent three dimension uh, in the drawing, right? But you don't want this in your file import. So you're going to want to come in here and get rid of anything that is a 3D design element on a 2D image because you need this to be perfectly flat from whatever perspective it is, if it's top view or side view or whatever. So you can see this ear is now clearly a two-dimensional representation where this one has a sort of extra dimensional aspect to it. So just get in there, clean all that up. And I know there's a, there's a couple other spots on this particular image that have, uh, that have that too, like down here by the cheeks. I just want to clean those up and just make sure you have yourself a very two-dimensional image that is an outline. Now there's one other trick with this particular model, which is why it's, or I keep calling it a model, with this image. It'll be a model at some point. In my mind it's a model already. Uh, this particular image is interesting because it's not a solid object. What do I mean by that? When I go to 3D print this, each of these pieces are separate pieces. Pieces like what? Let me zoom out so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So for example, this eye, this inside of the eye is a piece. This is a separate piece. This is a separate piece. You can see it's not connected to anything. If you think of all the white area as what you'll be printing and all the black area as nothingness, 
these are n many many of these pieces most of them actually are not connected to one another this I don't know what this is eyebrow piece is a completely separate piece all of these eye portions all of this they're all individual pieces I'll leave it to your discretion on how you want to deal with that you can of course come in the model and you know potentially fill in a few pieces so that things are connected but you're going to on this particular model you'll start losing some of the de design of this I, I'm not sure exactly how I would kind of connect this nose piece for example without losing too much of the, the nose elements and you'd, ha you'd have to kind of use your, some artistic flair I guess to connect all of these pieces so that when you print it out it doesn't just fall apart on you um, that's one way to do it. For this model, you're, I'll lose kind of the carved tiki look of it if I start doing that. Of course, it's fine. You might just want all of these pieces separate because you're only going to render them and print them anyway and glue them onto something or you, you're going to print them on a braft or something and just have them like that. But what I chose to do, once this is all sorted, I'm going to grab two different snapshots of this. I'll have my nice clean outline here and then I'm going to grab it like this and then I'm going to invert and also grab it like this. This will allow me to import the model and the negative of the model. So I'll, not only can I print skull object and the teeth but I can also print the lines in between the teeth and you can do that too overlay these two models and and have one have the inverse fill in for the big pieces uh, that's that's uh, like I said that's something you can or or you can choose not to do that's one way to solve this problem if you have a lot of pieces that aren't connected you will want this version and this version and you can bring them both into your next 3d program so let's take a look at that next once this model is all cleaned up uh, next step will be to port it. I've been choosing PNG or uh, egg file. Either one of these is probably going to be okay, depending on where you go next. Uh, I've been using PNG because the SVG conversion tool that I like accepts PNGs, and so uh, JPEG sometimes, uh, if you don't uh, be careful with your compression settings, you can introduce artifacts and pixelation and things into uh, into your uh, image. So. PNG doesn't have that problem quite as bad, so I go with a PNG file. And then we're going to pop over to the next step. So you The next step you'll want to do is convert your image to an SVG file, scalable gra graphics file. So I like this tool called online-convert.com. Stick a link in the description so you have it. But I like this one because it it's free and they don't make you sign in and there aren't too many annoying ads it seems to do a decent job and you have some advanced parameters here you can um, manipulate if you need to what you'll want to do is grab your file I don't really think we need any of these advanced parameters I typically just leave them alone and you start your conversion here it is we have our SVG file downloaded and then you want to take it to where you go next where do you go next again you have a lot of choice here with some free tools uh, you have Tinkercad, of course. You can bring it in here. You can bring it into Vectory, which of these are great free online manipulation tools. Go over here, go to Import, grab a file, file one SVG, open that up. It's going to complain that it's too big. Uh, I'm just going to re let it resize to 1,000. I just pressed Enter so that it auto-sizes the width for you to maintain the scale. There's the outline. This is just the black line outline and everything that's white is actually completely see-through so if you if you were to print this this would make a nice stencil or uh, outline of a file but it's not going to be a filled in sort of solid model like we were looking at when this comes in you'll see why I saved both versions of the file both the black and white version and then the negative of the black and white version be able to see the difference uh, and now you can see that this is the in piece but if I were to print this all of the in-between parts would be 
just loose and I actually did just for kicks print this on a raft and it's great it holds together and it looks cool but it's not going to be an, a something I could break off of the raft It'll, I'll just have a pile of parts and maybe that would be great if what you want to print is something that you're going to assemble separately with glue or some other method but if you really want to start doing a bit more manipulation of model you can bring them into Blender, like you see that I did. Blender is another excellent tool. This is a pretty complicated tool to use. do a lot here with it. You can see, instead of just having a completely flat object, I chose to grab certain elements of my file whoops, and extrude them separately. That way, when I print this out and stand it up, it'll, it'll have some natural um, dimension to it instead of just looking like a thick 2D drawing. Uh, this tool is excellent. Like I said, does take a bit more learning, and you could have several videos dedicated to how to use Blender and how to manipulate these things to, to do some of this. Probably not going to cover that here because I'm trying to keep this succinct for you. So, so from any of these tools, once you take your SVG file, bring it into 3D tool of your choice, manipulate it to your liking. You have another opportunity to manipulate it in a 3D space. What you would do potentially you can you know you can grab pieces and move them around now that they're 3D objects. You can do you know whatever you'd like to them. Resize certain pieces if you want. You can shape them however uh, you see fit and once you've done that it's time to port STL. And that'll take just a little bit of time, and it'll it'll export, and you're done. Any of these, uh, Vectory or Tinkercad or Blender, can export to STL. And okay, so that's the next step. Now that we export as a STL file, we're going to pop over to software of your choice. And here we are. I'm choosing to use Cura. I'm going to print this on my Cubic Viper. Bring this in. Of course, scale it to to your liking and you have you'll have your file here. I'm gonna bring this down to the printer. I'm gonna hit print and see how it goes. Ah. If you happen to have a model that's riddled with uh, problems for whatever reason, you have a couple of paths you can take. You can bring it into mesh mixer. Some repair techniques you can do there. You can make the model solid. If you're using uh, Lychee for example, you have some auto repair information built in if you're printing uh, on a resin printer. So you have a few model repair options uh, and it's going to depend on what you are comfortable with and what tools you have available. Mesh way. Going to put this on a SD card and get it printing. Yep. And here's our model printing away. Looks like it's coming out alright. We'll follow up in a little while once it's complete. There's our model. It came out alright. A little bit of stringing here but that's probably me playing with the settings of my setup file here but uh, let me pop this off. Hopefully you have similar success. I'm probably going to paint this up, but I wanted you to see the raw piece. Pretty pleased. That's what I wanted in my head, and this is how I envisioned it, and so I'm glad it came out. Hope you enjoyed this video series, and thanks for watching.